Really apologize. Apology accepted. No problem. Okay. Okay? Satya Baron Cohen is back as inept Kazakh journalist Borat Sagdiev and Borat's subsequent Movifilm, now available to watch on Amazon Prime Video. Trump is surrounded by women as music blares in the background. Trump gestures to one. As in the first movie, the sequel finds Borat in some shocking and outrageous situations that you'll struggle to believe actually happened. However, for the most part, they really did, and Cohen has actually been filming in plain sight throughout 2020. We've taken a look at the biggest moments in the sequel to prove they genuinely happened, including one sequence where Baron Cohen reportedly broke Borat tradition by revealing the truth to some of the participants, as it'd have been too offensive not to. His name? Barack Obama. This led to other Africans becoming political leaders. There are major spoilers ahead, and Borat's subsequent Movifilm is best experienced when you have no idea what to expect, so look away now if you haven't seen the brilliant sequel yet. Misogynist, so we now traffic grooms. Rudy Giuliani. It may be the final sketch in the movie, but we'll start with what already is the most talked about scene in Borat's subsequent movie film. The scene sees Donald Trump's lawyer and former Nick Mayor Rudy Giuliani, who has since called the scene a complete fabrication in a hotel room, expecting to be interviewed by Borat's daughter Tudor about the Trump administration's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. As of today, we have and ends with Giuliani following Tudor into the bedroom where she takes off his recording equipment. Giuliani is seen lying back on the bed and appears to be putting his hands in his trousers when Cohen bursts into the room, saying she is 15 and too old for you. Maria Bakalova, who plays Tudor, is 24 years old. The incident happened in July, with Giuliani revealing that he had foiled an attempted prank, only to later realize that it was Baron Cohen who had burst into the room. This person comes in yelling and screaming, and I thought this must be a scam or a shakedown, so I reported it to the police. He then ran away, Giuliani told Page Six. I only later realized it must have been Satya Baron Cohen. I thought about all the people he previously fooled and I felt good about myself because he didn't get me. Baron Cohen wants viewers of the movie to come to their own conclusions about the scene, while Giuliani has said that at no time before, during, or after the interview was I ever inappropriate. I wrote this song with my two best buddies. March for a rights rally. After Borat falls out with Tudor, the sequel sees Borat go and stay with two conspiracy theorists for five days during the pandemic. They talk to him about the virus and Democrats and help Borat write a song about the virus. Disguised as a bluegrass singer, Borat goes to a right-wing march for a rights rally in Washington and manages to get some of the crowd to sing along to the racist and offensive lyrics. The performance genuinely happened. The Wuhan flu, inject him with the Wuhan flu, let hear it! It happened at the end of June and was filmed at the time, you can see it here, but be warned there is offensive language, although it wasn't known that it was Baron Cohen doing a stunt as Borat. It was even thought that it might have been him filming for a new season of Who is America? We don't know if Borat's stay with the conspiracy theorists happened just before this as the movie shows, but Baron Cohen has opened up about having to spend five days entirely in character. I was waking up, having breakfast, lunch, dinner, going to sleep as Borat when I lived in a house with these two conspiracy theorists. You can't have a moment out of character," he told the New York Times. Baron Cohen added that his time with the conspiracy theorists wasn't to mock them, but to show that they're ordinary folks who are good people, who have just been fed this diet of lies. Chop them up like the Saudis do! <laughs> Judith Dim Evans. One of the unexpectedly sweet moments in Borat's subsequent Movifilm comes when Borat, dressed as offensively as you could imagine, visits Temple Cole Emeth in Marietta, Georgie, and meets Judith Dim Evans and her friend Doris. Instead of being insulted by Borat and ordering him to leave, Dim Evans takes the time to tell him that she is a Holocaust survivor and ends up challenging Borat's anti-Semitic views. Here on a simple mission to save my country by delivering a number one Televisky star, Johnny the Monkey, as a gift to Michael Pence. Evans died after filming and her estate filed a lawsuit against the movie due to filming taking place under false pretenses and with the intention to mock the Holocaust and Jewish culture. According to Deadline though, the scene marked the first time that Baron Cohen broke Borat tradition. 
It's claimed there's footage of them being told that he is Jewish and playing an ignorant character as a means of Holocaust education. The movie is dedicated to Dim Evans, and the filmmakers helped her family members create a website in her honor. In a nice touch, Amazon Prime's X-Ray bonus content mode allows viewers to hear Dim Evans tell the story of what happened to her family in World War II. Oh, thank you, Judith. You made me so happy. <laughs> Conservative political action conference. What seems like being a major moment in the movie ends up happening fairly early on, as Borat Gate crashes the Conservative Political Action Conference. Disguised as Donald Trump and carrying Tudor over his shoulder, Borat interrupts Vice President Mike Pence's speech to offer his daughter to Pence before being escorted from the conference. This happened back at the end of February, and it's another case of it being unclear at the time that it was Baron Cohen as Borat impersonating Trump. The outrageous scene also features Borat sneaking into the conference under a Ku Klux Klan robe before Baron Cohen hid in the bathroom, listening to conservative men go to the toilet for five hours until he broke into the main room. No charges were pursued against Baron Cohen for the stunt. Debutante Ball before Tudor can be given away to Pence, Borat wants her to learn how to be a lady, so Tudor gets some lessons from a debutante coach before she goes to a debutante ball in Macon, Georgia. Borat and Tudor are disguised as Professor Philip Drummond III and Sandra Jessica Parker Drummond, respectively, and shock the guests with a unique spin on a father-daughter dance that ends with Tudor revealing fake moon blood, Borat's description. Monroe County reporter-publisher Will Davis was at the event and claims people were paid $100 to attend, as well as being questioned if they knew who Baron Cohen was, among other pop culture knowledge. Anyone who didn't know him was in the audience for the dance, including Davis, who recalled what happened after the big reveal. That's when all of us who were sober marched to the checkout desk. Demanded our phones back and hit the road. My precious daughter and I walked out into the cool Macon night with mouths agape wondering what had just happened," he said. Tom Hanks. It shouldn't need saying, but we'll do it anyway. The movie's climactic beat that COVID-19 was the plan for Kazakhstan to get revenge on the world for the first movie is completely fake and scripted. The sequence reveals that Borat was patient zero and was infected before he made his journey to the US, which saw him stop off in various countries to unwittingly spread the virus. This includes a stop off in Australia where Borat infects Tom Hanks in one of the most random celebrity cameos of the year. But just to repeat, this didn't really happen. Well, they met, obviously, but Hanks is acting. Sure. <laughs> Hope you liked that video and if you haven't subscribed this channel, do subscribe it and we will see you in the next video.